Y'all doing all right? Amen. Amen. All right. Good to see everybody. Um, let's see. So we are um, taking a break from Matthew. So some of you are probably excited, and uh, maybe a few of you are like, bummer, you know. Um, but we're going to take a, a break from Matthew, and we're, gonna, we're doing a series called all the, On the Way to Bethlehem. And um, it's going to be one of those series where, where uh, myself and Pastor Robin switch back and forth between services. Right, so I give you the heads up now because we have some people float back and forth right between services. So if you float next week, you're going to hear the same message, right? <laughs> so because I'm preaching down here this week and I'm going to preach the same message next week upstairs, right? So so for the floaters, sometimes they go, it's like, oh man, I floated and then uh, I heard the same thing over again. Um, so, but maybe it'll be better the second time. I don't know, you know. Um, but so this this series is going to carry us into the the new year. Uh, we're, then we'll pick back up in Matthew. Um, so if you have your Bibles, um, and if you don't have a Bible, there are Bibles back at that desk or that table. Uh, I went and grabbed a few more. There's three brand new ones back there, too. If you want a brand new Bible, uh, if you don't have one, you can go back there. You can unwrap it. It's wrapped in plastic, even. Um, so you can unwrap that and have your own Bible. Uh, but we're going to be in, in Luke. Uh, and so uh, Luke is, so it goes Matthew, Mark, you. Matthew, Mark, you. Matthew. <laughs> Yeah, it's the third one, right? Uh, so Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? It's after Mark, and uh, you'll find it there. So in Luke chapter 1, verse 5, it starts like this. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. Um, and so I know that's really thrilling information for everyone, right? But so, so what, what's going on is, so service of the temple, right? That's what's happening. These, uh, the, the Levites service the temple, and some part of the Levites are broken into groups. One of those groups is the group of Abijah. And so they, they basically provide all the needs for the temple. They, they, they service the temple. They do, they do everything they need to do, but they're broken into uh, these different groups. And so this group, um, and then they, they serve twice a year, except for when, like, the major holidays come, then everyone serves. But there's like 20,000 or something roughly priests that are, that are broke up into, this, uh, into these, these categories. So it says, his wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And so, so both of these, this, these couple, have very strong, um, would you call it, uh, priestly bloodlines, right? Very strong priestly bloodlines. Um, so, so it says, both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord, but they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. And so, so there's some, understand, some, some things we have to understand here before we, we get, go further. So to be barren in that context, in that time, um, people believed that, that God had, was not happy with you, right? That, that really anything bad about your life it was going on it was because god was angry or that you had done something wrong and and, and so children at that time were, were like one of the major blessings that you could have and so here's this family who's 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 li or this couple who, who's living a good life um and, and and they don't have any kids and so the reason that kids were such a blessing at the time was was kind of threefold there was like personally you wanted someone to take care of you when you couldn't take care of yourself right like there was no, there's no social security net. Like there's no, no social programs, right? It's like you only have what, what you create to, to protect you and take care of you. Uh, and then generationally, you wanted children so that everything you had would go to someone else that you knew. Like, you know, everything you'd work for, your, your parents, your grandparents, their parents, like everything that your entire generation or your, your lineage has worked for would have someone to pass that on to. And, and then thirdly, so that you have like personally, you have uh, familial and then, nationally it really comes down to whoever has the most people in their army generally wins right it's like you want so you wanted to build up your army and so these are kind of the reasons that that children were kind of a, a big focus um of of the jewish people this time and, and you remember like if you go back to um to the days of moses right what it says like, like they just started out numbering everybody right there's a big focus on on having family and so so the the question then is so so if these people, so it must be, if, if people are, are kind of seeing this, they're going, well, why don't these people have kids? Well, it must be her. It's got to be her, because he's serving as the temple. 
he's serving the temple. And, 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 so, so there was this, and so not only would they start wondering, you start talking, right? It's, what, did, what did she do that God is so displeased with her, right? What did, or, or, or you might even start to question yourselves, like, what did I do? You ever ask that? What did I do to deserve this? <laughs> you ever ask that question, right? It's like, what did I do to deserve this? And, and so there's actually a, a famous story. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but uh, the, the man born blind. Do you know this story? He's the, uh, he's the fa- he's famous line, as I once was blind, but now I see that guy, right? right? So, so he, um, at the beginning of that story, it, it starts out, it's in, in John 9. It says, as he walked along, Jesus, it says, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And so Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but so that um, something be revealed in him, right? So there's this idea, right? It's this, this, it's this real idea that if something's going wrong for you, it's because you did something or your parents did something, right? That's kind of the, 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 the overall idea or concept of, what, of what's happening here, and, and you see it all throughout Scripture. So here's what, and it's a stigma that, that's kind of hard to get away from. It's like, no, I, people think that I, I did something wrong. People are wondering what's wrong with me. Um, so obviously, we understand now that infertility as a biological problem, right? That it's, and it's also not just a female problem, right? It, it can sometimes be a, a male problem. And so, so we, we have a little bit of an, a better understanding of, of, of biology and genetics and all these things. But there, there is a, and so I want to say this because what I'm going to say doesn't, act, doesn't um, apply to infertility or anything biological that you can't um, that is not under your control. What I'm about to say doesn't apply to those things. So, but when you're miserable, because this is a decent way of thinking about life to a degree, because if you're miserable and if you're in a bad place, it is a good thing to at least look at your own life and go, am I doing something stupid? Right? I mean, if, if things are going badly for you, because, and, and it's almost to be a good thing if it was, because if you're doing something stupid, that means you could change it. Right? Because if it's not you, if it's something else, it's like the world just seems to be stacked against me. It's like, so first, if there's something I can do about the problem, like I want to, and so this is, a, this is something that the, 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 Jew, the, the Jewish people were, were actually very, very good at. Um, that they would get, if, if you're familiar with kind of the cycle of, of the Israelites, it's like they'd be on top of the world, uh, they'd forget God, they would get captured, and then they would beg God to save them, and then they'd be on top of the world, right? And it, it's just this kind of cycle that's continually going. And so, but what would happen is they would get captured, and they wouldn't start shaking their fist at God. There would be a national repentance that would happen. They would actually go, no, no, we have done something wrong to get us here, and usually they had, right? And so it's, it's, it's a good exercise, to, to look at self first before casting blame on the world, all right? Maybe it is the world, right? But, but if we look at self first, um, we're going to be a, a little bit ahead of the game. So, um, and so th- that isn't the case here, though, right? That isn't the case with Zechariah and Elizabeth. Have you ever been so... But have you ever been far enough from hope that you just kind of, you, you stopped hoping? You ever have hope in something and you just go, it's been so long that I've been hoping for this and waiting for this and praying for this and I just don't, I, I think I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop praying for this because I, I, I wonder if it's not going to happen and, I, and, and I'm just, I can't. I can't handle the, the pain and the frustration of waiting. Have you ever, have you ever been there? Um, there's a story in, it's Abraham and Sarah. Do you know this story? Um, so um, Abraham and Sarah, they hadn't had kids, um, and, and even though God told them they would, right? So this is a little bit different scenario, right? Because for Zechariah and Elizabeth, there's no, at least we're not aware of a promise for children, right? But, but with Abraham and Sarah, like God had said, no, you are going to have descendants that outnumber the stars, right? And so they're sitting there kind of like, what, what is going on? And um, so in Genesis 18, uh, verse 10, it says this, then one said, an angel, an angel said, I will surely return to you 
in due season. And your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old, and my husband is old, shall I be fruitful? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Yes, you did laugh. Um, you ever laugh to stop from crying? And I don't, I don't know that she thinks this is hilarious, necessarily. Um, but, but sometimes you, you would laugh and, and say, I, <laughs> don't, don't bring that hope back in here. Right, because I've, I've finally got past that. Right, she's, she's old. Like, she had given up. In fact, like, right, she had already given her, her um, maidservant to her husband as a concubine to have a kid. She's like, I've already dealt with the pain. I've already dealt with all of this stuff. I don't, <laughs> no, no, not going to happen. Um. They've moved past the hope. Now, here's what I want you to grasp, though. Even though Zechariah and Elizabeth had given up hope, they hadn't given up on God. Right? They're, they're still serving in the temple, aren't they? They're, they're still doing the things that they're supposed to be doing. They're still doing what God has called for them to do. Like, he is, he's, they're, they're working and they're doing the, the right things. Now, that's, um, that's not easy to do. Because... There, there is a stage, there's a stage in my life where I was so tired, and I was, I was beyond, I had been praying and praying and praying, and nothing was changing. Um, and, and you just start to give up on hope, but what I did is I also gave up on God. I was like, no, 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 these two things are lying. If, like, I was living in this very, and listen, we, we all do this to some degree. It's like, God, I'm, I'm going to do what you want me to do, but you need to come through every so often, right? It's like, you need to do your job, and then I'll do my job, and it's like, so we're trying to have this, like, this partnership rather than a, than a father-child thing. It's like, we're not partners, right? He's like, he's, he's God, and he's, he's going, so these people, are, they're still, they're working, but I was, I was, I kind of pulled a Sarah, Right? Because what, what we say Sarah did, like she, was, she went and she's like, listen, this isn't going to happen. I'm not going to have a kid. But God says, I need to. Right? And so she takes Hagar, her maidservant, she gives him to Abraham as his concubine, and they have Ishmael, right, as a son. And, and so what she does is she says, listen, if God's not going to come through for me, I'm going to come through for me, rather than waiting. And so she takes, well, her and Abraham, it's not all on her, right? They take it into their own hands. And ends up causing generational trauma <laughs> in their lives, right? And, uh, and, and, and trauma that, that, that they deal with for a long time. And so we, when, we, when we decide to take God's plans into our own hands rather than waiting, rather than waiting on God, because we don't want to wait, right? We want to run, right? It's like, I, I just want to I want to get through this, right? I want to get through this pain. I want to get through this waiting thing. I'm not a waiter, right? I'm a goer. I'm a doer. I want to do something, right? That's what can happen. And so let's, let's just go back to, um, let's go back to the story. Um, so here we have a couple that blameless and righteous, and their inability to conceive is not of their own volition, right? So that's where we're at. So it says verse 8. Once, when he was serving as priest before God during his section's turn of duty, he was chosen by Lot according to the... Who, who thought Lot was a person this whole time? Did you ever think Lot was a, like chosen by Lot? Like, so they're actually pooling. It's almost like straw, something, something like that, right? So it says, the, the court, chosen by Lot according to the customs of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. So, so this is like a huge honor, right? It's a huge honor. And um, so there's roughly, what, 20,000 priests, okay? So there's, that gives us a, like a 1 in 600 chance of being chosen to do this job, okay? Now, 
the Cleveland Browns have a one in like 500, right? So, this, so, so one in 600 to be chosen. Right now, the Browns are one in 500 to, to win the AFC, right? So the Browns have a better chance of winning the AFC than, than he would have had to do this. Now, the Browns are not winning the AFC. I don't, all right, you guys are fine. That's fine. We'll move on from that. It's not, the odds are bad. The odds are bad. But he, he, he gets it. And so it says, Now at the time of incense offering, the whole assembly of the people were praying outside. So like this is a big event, right? He's in there. There's people all over the place praying, and they're praying and waiting for him to kind of come back out. Um, so now at the time of the incest, um, in, incense, incest, that's a different sermon. Um, the, <laughs> so, verse 11. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid. Do you ever wonder if, if angels develop complexes from constantly scaring humans? I don't... Like, like, like have you ever been to play... Like, have you ever been behind someone and, like, you know you're there, but you know they don't know you're there? And you're like, I'm at the point now where no matter what I do, I'm scaring this person, right? It's like, like so that's kind of what they're always doing. They're like, I don't know. They're always just like, but it's always just chill. It's like, relax, but there's just no way of getting around. I just, I just wonder if they're just like, ah, I'm going to scare these people again. These are the things I think about when I'm writing a sermon. So I just share them with you. Um, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid, right? That's their, that's their key phrase. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. Um, I I don't like to focus so much on stories of of answered prayer too much, um, because I know that there's many of us sitting here, watching at home, or who could just couldn't make it, that have a a list of prayers that haven't been answered the way that they wanted them answered, right? We, we all know this. Like, we all have, or, or we're waiting on a prayer that, that just doesn't seem like it's going to come. So we, we all have those things. And so what I don't want to do is bring people out of a peace. Like, if you've already said, I, I've made my peace, like, my, my hope is not to bring you out of that and, like, to kind of like, no, no, get the hope back. Start praying again. Do all this. Like, that's not my, my hope. But I like the way that Zechariah and Elizabeth have done it, right? It's like, it's like here's our prayer. God, here's my prayer. And, I, and I'm going to give it to you, and then I'm going to go do what you've called me to do. And, and I, I love the way it did that, because that, again, that wasn't, that wasn't what I did. It was like, I want to be like, no, you've got to do this, or I'm not doing this. I need you to do this. Like, that's the way that I would, I would work with God, and sometimes we do those things. But, um, so they, they, that literally, that's literally seeking the kingdom of God. Like, that's what we talk about a lot here, right? It's like we're going after the good thing. It's like doing the thing that God's called us to do, regardless of how often or when our prayer is answered. Um, it's out of my hands, so I, I'm just going to do what I know is good and right. I'm just going to do what I know is good and right, because I can't do anything about that. I've given it to God. Um, so, so the, the, the Jewish people were well-versed in waiting, all right? Who feels just like they're uh, good at waiting? Anybody just really good at it? Okay, no, right? So it's like, it, it, so it's actually, so they, would, they would often find themselves in captivity. Like I was saying, they were kind of in this, this circle, often in the Old Testament of like captive, free, captive, free. Um, and so in Isaiah 40, it's a, it's a cool little passage, but it actually connects John the Baptist— um, with waiting, and it's, a, and it's a, a passage that often gets used during this, this season. So if you look at Isaiah 40, um, so like verse 3, it says this, A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Right, so if you don't know, that's, the, that's John Baptist's, it, John Baptist quotes that passage, John the Baptist quotes that passage when he sees Jesus at the um, baptism. Right, he goes, there he is. Like, so, so there's this, this piece in here. But then, what is this whole chapter about? In verse 1, it tells us, in Isaiah 40, verse 1, Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to hear that she has served her term. 
that our penalty is paid. And so Isaiah is telling his whole community, like, hey, your waiting's over. Right? They had been in captivity this time. And so Isaiah's coming, he's like, hey, just so you know, like, like you, you waited, and, it, and it's over. So there's, there's going to be good things coming now. And, and then at the end of this, and this used to be one of my favorite, I, I love this passage, because um, it just really, uh, I felt like it resonated with me. Uh, verse 28 says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? Or no, verse 27. Go back. Why did you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, my right is disregarded by God? Have you ever, you ever felt that? It's like, like, God, I've been throwing prayers, and it's just, they just bounce off. It's like, and, and also, we've been, like, the Israel, he's talking to the Israelites, it's also, we've been captive for 40 years, right? It's like, so what do you mean, why do I say this? Like, because it's been 40 years. I'm, I'm impatient. Although, I don't know, 40 years is fairly patient, honestly, right? If you're waiting 40 years. But like, they're like, what, what, where are you, God? Why haven't you answered this prayer? And, so, and then he says this, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the heavens and earth. He, he does not faint or grow weary. His, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will grow faint and weary and young will fall exhausted but those who what those who come on y'all it says wait doesn't it those who wait those who wait in the lord right those who wait for the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like easels they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not be faint and so it's in the waiting that god starts to transform us It's in the waiting that we become more like God. Because listen, that is who God is. God is a waiter. God waits. He says his patience leads us to repentance, right? His kindness leads us to... So John, uh, Pastor John Ortberg, he said it this way. He said, what happens in us while we wait is as important as what we are waiting on. What happens in us while we wait is as important as what we are waiting on. And when we are waiting... It's a, type of, uh, it's a type of wilderness for us. Um, like, you can, you can go through, there, there's, um, I think, the Israelites, remember, they waited in the desert for 40 years before they went to the promised land. Um, when they marched around Jericho, that had to feel weird, right? You're just, just day after day marching around a big, a big wall, waiting for something to happen, right? <laughs> waiting and waiting. Um, David, King David, he has to wait to become king while Saul is just messing it up. Well, King Saul. That's not the Saul of the New Testament, right? So there's a lot of waiting, but it's in, those, it's in the waiting that the Israelites were transformed, right? It's, it's in the waiting that, so, so you don't stop doing the right thing. And it's like, remember, what is the, the, the 23rd Psalm? It's, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not, yea, though I sit or I stand, or it's not, yea, though I run, right? It, it's, it's, I'm going to walk through this. I'm going to do the things that I know I need to do. I'm not going to rush through it because rush, rushing through it, does, I don't, God isn't able to do the work in me when I'm rushing. Right? Because that was me. I just wanted to, I wanted to get to the next, what's the, I feel awful. What's the next thing that can make me feel good? Rather than sitting, rather than just doing what I'm supposed to be doing in that, it was like, I gotta get to the next thing. I, I just gotta, I gotta run through this. I gotta, I gotta get over this as fast as I can so I can keep doing the thing that I want to keep doing, right? That, there's no transformation doesn't happen in that. It's, it's in the waiting. It's in the waiting. Um, one of the, uh, and, 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 it, and it, one of the greatest gifts in the waiting is healing. That's where a lot of healing can happen. Um, if, you've, if you've lost a relationship, if you've lost a person in your life, if you've lost a job, right? There's, there's time in that between the next thing and in that waiting period where, where God can heal you where, you, where you can work on being healed rather than, especially relationally, if, you lost in a, if you're getting out of a relationship and you don't heal, you're taking all that, all that baggage and hoping that the next person will carry it for you, right? So it, it's in the waiting that, that we find healing as well. Um, so the, um, the irony of this story 
is that John the Baptist is born out of an answer to prayer, right? Out of an answer to prayer. Um, but John's life, John the Baptist, he ends up in jail. Remember? John the Baptist ends up in jail, which is a lot of waiting, <laughs> right? There's a lot of waiting in jail. And as he's waiting so long, he's waiting, 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 waiting. Until he, he starts, he keeps hearing all these things that Jesus has been doing. All, all these miracles, all this stuff for all these people. And he starts to call them. And he calls his people and he says, hey, go, um, go, go ask Jesus if he's really the one. Right, that's what it says in Luke 7, 20. It says, when they heard, when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to ask, are you the one who's to come, or are we to expect someone else? This is John the Baptist. He, he baptized Jesus, right? He, he made the proclamation, right? All these things, like, because sometimes in the waiting, we lose hope, and, and things start to not it's like, I thought something, but it's like, man, this doesn't feel like it's working out the way that I really thought it would. It's like, my buddy's Jesus. Like, he's, he's like my friend. Like, we're cousins, right? It's like, where's Jesus? Like, I'm in jail. Like, you don't even know these people you're helping. Like, we're family. Like, come get me out of here. Um, and so Jesus answered him. Verse 22, it says, And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. And so he's about to kind of quote Isaiah, but he doesn't kind of do it exactly. He mashes up some Old Testament um, uh, prophecies together, and this is what he says. It says, The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, those with a skin disease are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have good news brought to them. Like, man, this is good, right? And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. Now, he leaves out, and John, like, if, you, if, you knew your, if they knew their Old Testament, they, they knew that it's like, you left something out of there. Like, that's not the whole thing. Like, so there's a passage that Jesus left out of there, and it's in Isaiah 61.1. And look, check this out. This is the not part of what he said, but it's kind of surrounded by it. He leaves out to proclaim freedom for the captives and release darkness for the prisoners. As if to say, I am... I am the one, but you're not getting out of here. And, and so John's life begins with an answer to prayer, a yes to prayer. And it ends with a no. And that, that's kind of life. Like, we, we are all going to experience these ups and these downs, these yeses and these noes. And what we're called to is just to continue to walk the life that God has called us to. Say your prayers. Be expectant. Hope. Put your faith in God. The answer might be yes. The answer might be no. But we continue to seek first the kingdom of God. Because life is going to throw awful things at us. We, the one thing all of humanity has in common, every single one of us, is that we're going to experience pain and suffering at some time. And, and so but when we have purpose within it, and that's what we talk a lot about here, is finding your purpose. What is God calling you to? It's like, because when you have purpose, the, the, the more purpose you have, the more suffering you can endure. And you'll notice that. When, when sometimes it's like, man, I was, that was hard, but I, I had people where I had purpose, or I did something. It's like, the more purpose you have, the more suffering that you can endure. Um, so, uh, the band can start coming up here. Um, the, the Lord's Table. We, we take communion right on the first Sunday of the month. It's a, it's a table of waiting. Did you know that? It, it, it's a table of, of waiting. Because remember what Jesus said, or, or we say sometimes, it's like Jesus came, lived, died, resurrected, ascended to the throne, and then we are waiting for his return, right? Right? We're, we're waiting. He says, I'm going to come back. And so, so we have this idea of waiting. And so this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians. He says, For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And in verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It's in the waiting, right? It's, it's in the waiting. Like, this is what we're called for in the waiting. The Lord's Supper is in the waiting. And so we, we, when we take it, we remember that we're, we're waiting for something, something great, something amazing, right? So I'm going to... Do you mind helping me again with, with communion? Um, I'm going to pray, um, and then if you would like to receive communion, it's an open table. Uh, if, if you've never been here before, um, if you've never taken communion, for, you, are, you are welcome to do this. Uh, it is, um, no matter what church background you have, or no church background, um, it is open for everyone. And so you're all welcome to come up and, and participate in that. And um, So I'll pray, and then if you want to come around this side uh, and, and meet us, and then you can go back to your seat, and you can take it um, however you need to after you up here at your seat. Anything you want to do is welcome. So, um, Father God, um, You're patient. You are, you've been patient with me. God, I know that there's, there's people here or people watching that, yes, God has been patient with me. And I'm thankful that you didn't give up on me. I'm thankful that you have not given up on us. That in the waiting, you are transforming us. So God, while we wait... Would you make us more like you? God, I thank you for what you did on that cross, the shedding of your blood for our sins. And we remember it every time we take this. We remember what you did for us. And then we take it into the community. The same love, forgiveness, acceptance, patience, kindness, goodness, all those things that you, you give us, we want to give to others. So God, I'm so thankful for you and what you're doing in us and in this church. And it's in your name that we pray. Amen.